Hi there, this is uh, Dave from VideoFXUniverse.com and today's tutorial is basically um, lighting and illumination in 3D Studio Max 9. Uh, this tutorial is probably mainly for new users for Max that um, want to get to know how to uh, use lights and shadows and things like that. So obviously if you use Max quite often then you probably already know most of this. Okay, so um, basically what we have here is a scene setup. Um, I've got a, um, a kind of a see-through box here um, and it's on a plane and next to it I have a sphere as well. I'm going to be using these shapes to demonstrate the, uh, the different types of lighting and how they interact with the scene. Okay, so obviously there's no lights in this scene whatsoever so if I just render this one out uh, you'll see that it looks very flat you know I mean obviously there's still some basic uh, shading going on inside of it but this is uh, just to give you an idea that, um, that, that, that that's a different uh, corner and all the rest of it it's, it's very very basic uh, shadowing there and it's not really realistic at all it's very very flat this is just to give you an idea of depth really um, not much else so um, okay if we go into uh, the light panels here you can see we've got quite a lot of um, lights um, so um, you need to know which ones do what um, obviously we've got a target spot and a free spot now basically these are exactly the same thing however you get an extra point um, to move around the, um, the, the light with um, and you've got a target direct and a free direct you have an omni, a skylight, a mister area omni and a mister area spotlight now I wouldn't worry about these bottom two um, at the moment because most of the time in Max you'll mainly be using the target, direct and omni um, throughout anything that you usually do. Okay, so it's good to know what different lights do what. Okay, so if I bring out a target spotlight and start off at the top, click, hold and drag down, you'll see that you've got two points you've got a um, you know, the actual um, source of the light and also the direction of the light. Now this can be moved around and uh, changed just like this can as well. Now if you were just using a free spot you wouldn't have the option to move this. You'd only be able to rotate and move this lot, this bit here. Okay, so if I just uh, change the direction slightly okay, um, this on its own won't really cause any uh, changes to the scene. It might brighten it up slightly but um, that's because you need to add the shadows. So if we click on the modify button here you can see that you've got uh, the shadow options here and it's not checked. Now opening this up you can see we've got a hell of a lot of different shadows to choose from. Okay now if I just select the default which is shadow map click this to activate the shadows and then I render the scene out now you'll see that it looks completely different. Now obviously you can see here that the uh, the shadow map is not a very good uh, type of shadow to use, it's not very realistic, it's uh, got a lot of softness around the edges that don't really seem to work very well. So um, what we're going to try and do, we're going to change it to uh, let's have a look, where are we? We'll go to area shadows. Okay, let's try it again and see what we come back with now there you go, a different shadow and as you can see the corners are a lot more sharper and solid um, and like I say the, the shadows are completely black but um, if you want to you can change the uh, the shadows by opening up the, uh, the shadow parameters here and as you can see the shadow colour is set to black now you can change this to whatever colour you want but I wouldn't really recommend it because most shadows you you know on, on, a, on a blue surface you won't, you won't get a green shadow so it's better, better to keep it at black now here you have the density. This is how powerful the shadow actually is, how dark it is. Now if you lower this slightly, I'll go to 0.7, okay, and render the scene again, you'll now see that the, uh, the shadow is a little bit more transparent and a lot softer. Um, so obviously you can you can get a lot more effects with um, lowering the shadow density um, so therefore it's not completely blacked out um, in the in the um, shadowed parts okay so uh, that's area shadows um, mental ray shadow map now this is probably um, not really needed to be used in the standard scanline render um, which is default with Max I mean if, if you want to use um, mental ray you need to go into your assign render 
and change it to mental ray. Uh, so this shadow is specifically for mental ray so we won't mess with that one at the moment. And advanced ray traced. Now this is the one that I usually use the most in all my work because the ray traced shadows are usually the uh, the most accurate shadows that I, I find work well with most of my scenes. So if I put the uh, shadow density back up to 1 and render you can see it kind of has the same effect that um, the area shadows has um, and also like I say if you uh, lower, lower this down to uh, 0.8 or something like that you know you'll get the same kind of um, effect that the other one had okay but if you put the shadows up to 1.0 which was the, uh, the the highest you can have and you add another light into the scene so I'm going to hold shift and drag this out to clone it okay what you'll find now is if you render this scene you'll have two separate shadows as you can see you got one shadow going this way and one shadow going that way um, as you can see it's quite uh, faded and transparent on, the e on either side but the, bar the part that's not receiving any illumination at all is completely black okay um, also you can notice that the scene is lit up a lot more than it was before because we have both lights if you select a light you may, might need to bring the intensity down now the intensity is the uh, the next part I was coming to this is how powerful your light is now as you can see it's at the default which is 1.0 if you bring this down to 0 0.7 and I'll bring the other one down to 0 0.7 because now I have two lights on the scene so I'm getting double the illumination and render the scene out there you go you see it's not as bright now and uh, we've still got these faint shadows either side but because the multiplier is set to 1 again if I bring this down and render it there we go you can see we've got three different shades of shadow you've got the um, uh, the, the most faded here um, it gets a little bit darker here and it's a little bit more darker inside now again like I said the inside part is not receiving any illumination so it's going to be the most darkest part but because out here it is receiving illumination um, the shadow is quite faded okay right so if I just delete this light here because we don't need that go back to this light uh, set the shadow up to one again and right if I just move this round to, to here and render again you'll see that you're getting absolutely no light at all from this side because the uh, the light is being projected from this side here but if you had a light on this side you would get light showing on the box um, on, on this on this side here so it's always good to illuminate around your scene to make sure that everything is getting light okay because if it's not getting light and your shadow parameters are set to 1.0 you'll have completely blacked out areas okay right here's something else I'm going to show another light okay so go back to the standard um, um, and click on skylight now skylight is a um, quite an interesting one if you you set it off in the uh, top viewport here and basically this is set to 1.0 but if you've got other lights in the scene I usually always set the um, skylight down to 0.3 or 4 now what skylight does is send global illumination everywhere okay so even though um, this this corner here is not receiving anything and it's completely black in the last render um, now we know that we I haven't changed this light at all from when from um, the last time I rendered out so you know that this was completely black but because I've added this skylight look what happens now when I uh, render this scene you see 